Two years ago today, the nation watched in horror as two planes struck the Twin Towers in New York City, another at the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., and one that was headed for the Capitol but was downed in Pennsylvania. After that day, thousands of troops made their way to the Middle East to fight the war on terror, one that many veterans are still feeling the effects from today. Northern News Now's Mitchell Zimmerman spoke with a local veteran who served in the Middle East. When he came home, he says he knew he wasn't himself, but eventually he found a way to help others in the same situation. And I think like most of the U.S., we didn't understand that we were under attack. Mike Waldron was stationed in Okinawa, Japan on September 11, 2001, serving in the Marine Corps Infantry. We had our Humvees and our weapons ready to get on ship and go to the Middle East. So within 48 hours, we were... We were ready to go, however. So. He wouldn't arrive in the Middle East for another two years. 2003 was when Waldron had his feet planted in Kuwait. And we dug some holes and we just lived in them. We lived in them for about six weeks. Ready for war. Uh, and just waited until President Bush declared war. Now in a war zone, Waldron lived through some of the worst conditions he could imagine. I was riding in a Humvee, uh, manning a fully automatic grenade launcher, and I could hear the explosions and the smoke was, was billowing, and it was such a surreal feeling. Seven months later, he returned home and quickly found out that he wasn't the same person when he deployed. I didn't realize it at first. I had really strong control over my emotions. Like, I didn't get upset. I didn't get sad. I, and I thought that was a really good thing. But his spouse disagreed, and that's when things started going downhill. Dreams turned to nightmares, and chest pain and tunnel vision became the norm. And the doctors told me I was fine. They gave me EKG and sent me home. After many visits to the VA, he found out that anxiety and panic attacks were to blame. Like, I realized these, these fears or triggers that I had today were related to what happened in combat 10 years ago. What he soon realized was that many veterans like himself have difficulty getting back to civilian life. According to a recent estimate, about 7,000 vets died in hostile environments in the Middle East since 2001. But more than 120,000 have died by suicide in that same time period. It's a, it's a staggering, staggering number. And now that's how his organization, Duluth-based 23rd Veteran, comes in to help vets like him, working with small groups of Northland heroes. And we do an hour workout. Waldron and his team <laughs> try to change a negative outlook on everyday situations. And then we sit down on the gym floor right there and we go through our psychology together. Into positive ones. Our subconscious can start to recognize a crowded restaurant as a fun and trusting environment rather than a place full of possible enemy. Waldron says it was a calling for him to help his fellow servicemen and women. And I, I knew I could not only help you know, people in this area, but help the friends that I served with, mm -hmm. like I felt obligated to. A call to serve, not just his country, but the ones he knows best. The, the team environment and the community that we built is really special. In Duluth, Mitchell Zimmerman, Northern News Now. And Waldron says he hopes to eventually expand 23rd Veteran into 50 cities across the nation to help veterans like himself. We have more information about 23rd Veterans and resources for those in our region on our website, northernnewsnow.com.